Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial in 3D Studio Max. Today we're going to keep it quick and simple because I'm trying out a new workflow method for making these tutorials, trying to make them a little bit better for you guys. I got a new screen capture program I'm running that should make everything run a lot smoother. It won't be as laggy as it was before. I also downloaded the demo for 3D Studio Max version 2013. I figured I'd mess around with it a little bit and check out all the new cool stuff. But don't worry for what we're going to be doing today in this tutorial. You don't need to have version 2013. This will work fine in pretty much every other version of 3D Studio Mac. You just may not have some of these fancy viewing options I'll be playing around with later on. Like this amazing gradient viewport that I strongly dislike and will turn off right now. Yeah, back to solid color. That's better. And also this realistic view is all right for some things. It just gets a little annoying and you can tell your computer has to work harder to keep up with it. So I'm just going to change it back to the normal shaded. All right, now that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and start doing something more productive. So to keep this simple, we are going to create a pawn from a chess set using some splines and a lathe modifier. This is a silhouette image of a pawn that I created and we'll be using this to trace our splines around. If you'd like to use this image to trace around too, feel free to take a screen cap of this and use it for your own. Ah! I'm just going to close that out and go to my create tab, make myself a plane, and we'll just do something like uh, 700 and 400. Uh, it's 4,000 for those of you playing along at home. If we're going by Price is Right rules, I would have lost terribly. So just center that up. And now I'm going to grab my pawn JPEG here and drag it in on top of my plate. And it looks a little squashed, so I'm going to go into my Modified tab for the plane and just thin it out a little bit. And it looks like 350 will be fine. All right, now I'm going to hit T on the keyboard to go to my top view. I'm also going to maximize my window and hit G on the keyboard to get rid of this grid. All right, so I centered this all up here. By the way, if you just right click on one of these sliders here, it'll automatically reset it to zero. And now I'm going to go to my create tab over to the shape section and I select a line. Now let's start at the top of this guy. I'm just going to click and about right here we're going to click and drag so that we can curve our line here and then I'm going to move down about here and click and drag straighten out our curve a bit go about here and click and drag that's a little messy that's all right just get it in about the general area we can actually go through and fix this up later for those of you familiar with any type of rotoscoping, this probably seems scarily familiar and slightly more obnoxious. So I'm just going to quickly run through and finish this up by clicking and dragging. And to finish it off, I'm just going to click right here in the center on the bottom and right click to stop my spline from being created. That's that. It's a little messy, but don't worry. We can clean it up. So you only really need to worry about tracing one side. When we use the lathe modifier, it'll take care of the rest. Now, let's straighten this mess out. First off, I'm going to change my line color so that I can see it a little better. Right now, it's a little hard to see against that white and black background. So I'm going to go to my color and we are going to add a custom color. We'll make it bright orange. That looks good. I'll make it a lot easier to see. Press OK. Alright. Now to straighten this line out and get it to trace around the edge of our pond a little better, we're going to need to go into the Modify tab and then select Vertex Mode. In Vertex Mode, you'll see that all the points that we made get highlighted. And when we select one of these dots, we can move them around and reposition them so that they fit a little better. So I'm just going to go clean some of this up. Now if you're trying to clean your lineup and you realize that you don't have these little handles like I do, it's probably because you weren't clicking and dragging earlier, so which means most likely have a corner vertex. And all you need to do to change that is select your vertex, right click it, and select Bezier. And that'll give you these little Bezier handles here. So that's just a quick tip in case you didn't have them and you're wondering what happened, what went wrong. That's it. You can also select a couple of different ones like smooth 
or a bezier corner, but we're just gonna stick for bezier right now. So I'm just gonna speed through this again, make sure everything's looking good. Now for these two at the bottom, we wanna make sure that these are corners. That one already is selected as a corner. And then this one, we're gonna move down a little farther here since the bottom has a hard edge. We're gonna change this one, not to bezier, but bezier corner, and that'll let me grab just one of these handles instead of both. So I can just line it up, make that kind of straight. Okay, so now that we're done tracing around this edge here, we can go ahead and get out of vertex mode. And we don't really need our background image anymore. So, so we'll just select that, right click it, and go to hide selection. And that'll just hide it in the background. And we're left with just our spline. Now there's two quick steps that we need to take care of before we can apply the lathe modifier. So I'm going to select my line. The first thing I need to do is go back into vertex mode. And the reason, if I press G on the keyboard and bring the grid back up, the reason I made this so close to the center is because we want to make sure both edges are aligned in a straight line. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this line and make sure we are on the X axis. So I'm just going to right click this and it'll put it to zero exactly right on the line, move down, select our other edge vertex and right click on this one as well. So that was step one, go ahead and get out of vertex mode. And the second step is to move our gizmo here so it's also in line with everything else. So all I need to do to realign the gizmo is go up here to the hierarchy tab. So I'm gonna click on the hierarchy tab. In here we want to affect pivot only. Select affect pivot only. When we select that, it'll give us these bigger arrows on top of our normal arrows. So now we can just move our pivot point around and I'm just going to right click on the X again and put it right in the center. Then I don't need to, but I might as well just put it in the center of the Y axis too, just so everything's even. Let's go ahead, uncheck effect pivot point and we can go back to the modify tab. So now we've aligned everything equally we can go ahead and finally apply the lathe modifiers. Have your line selected, make sure you're in the modify tab and drop down the modifier list. So we're gonna scroll down here and look for lathe, lathe. Starts with an L, ends with an A. So once I find lathe, I'm going to select that and you'll see it jumps immediately into a full 3D object. So how that works is it just basically took our spline line that we created and just rotated it the whole way around and connected it with the other side. Now if your object doesn't look like mine right away, it may look like, it may look something like this, or like this, well that's just because your lathe didn't rotate in the correct direction. Just click either X, Y, or Z until it looks the correct way. Or if it looks something like this, where it's way too fat, or this, where it looks like it imploded upon itself, just make sure you're on center. All right, now there's one more thing that we have to take care of. If you look real closely at the bottom, there's some weird issue with the center here. Also at the top, there's a real big problem here, and that can be easily fixed by just selecting the weld core option. Bingo, and you're done. And all that does is weld all the little vertices together in the middle. So all right here, they all join together. This will just weld them. One last thing that sometimes is a problem when you use the lathe modifier, if we render, you can see that our object looks really strange, almost like it, it turned itself inside out. Well, that's pretty much what really happened. The normals are backwards. So all we need to do is flip the normals, and if we render it, you can see everything looks good. So that's pretty much it. That's as easy as it gets with the lathe modifier. All we need to do is go through and touch up our model a bit. You can see that there's a hard line right here. Well, we can easily fix that by going back into the line. And if we want to see our line and the finished product at the same time, we can click this button here that says show end result. And that will just let us see both at the same time. So let's see where our problem is. There's a hard line right here on this vertex. Let's right click it and see what it says. As you can see, corner is selected and that's going to be the problem. So if we just hit smooth instead, that'll smooth that right out and no more hard edge. So let's go ahead and get out of vertex mode and go back up to the lathe. So really that's all there is to it. I told you we'd keep it simple today and we did. All I did extra was add in a background and a few lights. And now all there is to do is play around with these viewport settings. Let's try this clay one here. Whoa, yeah, clay, I, I, I see it, sure, okay. Not bad, let's see what else we have here. 
we can go to our realistic viewport and uh, yeah I guess that looks about the same as the render I think the render may look a bit better if you ask me there's also all these other crazy stylized ones like this graphite it kind of makes it hard to uh, ro you know rotate around the scene too Alright, so that's pretty much all I have for you today. If you like this tutorial and maybe want to watch a few more, you can check us out at youtube.com slash doodlypro. There's a couple other really cool tutorials on there I think you might like. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <coughs>